Hello, Namaskar. Happy Easter, everybody. It's a Sunday morning, fourth day of Easter. Um, actually, um, I think um, tomorrow is also holiday. It's counted as Easter, but it's not actually Easter. You know, it's um a government and national holiday because once it's on Sunday. But anyhow, um, I'm up at my old school here, Richard Ishmael, and I used to spend a lot of Easter's here. You know. And this used to be a big play field going all the way up, up over into North Georgia Primary. This used to be my thought forms. My class is a 3C, the third one down. Um, now I'm going to say a little something about Easter, you know. Easter is a beautiful holiday in that, um, in the sense that people are recreating their celebrating because of the resurrection of Christ that Christ didn't die he resurrected on the third day and Christ was a messiah for Christianity the founder of Christianity during his time Judaism or Abrahamism the Jewish faith was very much alive and strong so what happened is that they didn't welcome a new religion that was trying to establish himself a teacher was proclaiming himself to be a channel for God for Jehovah they didn't really believe that this um, guy would um, say that he can be the Messiah or the control of the world or um, Jesus, right? So what I'm um, happening is that they start to create insurrection in the country. Jerusalem, Nazarene, Babylonians, they get the local Barabbas, the local revolutionary. They set free Barabbas and crucify Jesus. Jesus Barabbas is going to bring us physical liberation, independence in the physical level. Jesus talking about spiritual, mental peace, psychic benefits and peace. What he can give us, he can give us no luxury, not no relief from our physical tortures and pains. So they said, kill Jesus, crucify Jesus and free Barabbas. So Barab Jesus was said to be a Messiah, one of the archangels who came down to earth. Means that some like so in Hindu philosophy, these masses were liberated and then located in high dimension or high planes. They um, choose to collect five elements and form a physical body and come down in the proper location environment where they could speak to a people who will understand them or from that people, that nation, it will go out to the rest of the world. So um, what Jesus did is try to preach people against the people who are not following rules of behavior and hell, they were more concerned about material things, you know, how to accumulate, how to feed a churn, how to get property, how to get more cows, more cattle more um, prosperous in the physical plane women and these things like Machu had a whole set of women um, some of them were like um, Peter they were very a poor fisherman very coercive guy used of very loud and abusive Machu was a tax collector but the last brother of Jesus I think his name was James Jesus liked him the most because he was protected at celibacy throughout his life. So Jesus had a soft feeling in his heart for him. So like Sivananda said, Swami Sivananda, celibacy is the most beautiful of virtues. So what he used to remind us is that, um, what he used to remind us is that the crucifixion of the truth of nobility, you see, we find these sort of things happening always, you know, the people who try to change society in the way of behavior, mannerism, good conduct. You find this favor sometimes with the masses who want to continue going on with the tradition, the culture, what seems to be pleasurable and happiness for them, but it's not true happiness, you know. So it took a shake up for them to change. And what happened is that um, like many holy men and saints and good people, you know, Jesus found themselves being crucified and torture the pastor a lot of hardship and struggle to establish his mission and so on so um this tradition this culture was actually brought from europe by the english people when they colonized guyana here we had in this culture we had our african culture our Hindu culture our chinese culture the amerindian indigenous people had their own thing 
uh, the Portuguese had their own stuff. So the Hindu people, what they did was um, took it, absorb it into their own, and they adjust with the other races when they started it, stay home and fly the kites and all kind of thing, you know. So the kites that they fly represent the mountain of Jesus back into heaven. The raising of the ascension of the spirit from the physical body. The cross, I hear some people explain that it has a mystical um, meaning. It says that when the body is crucified, the spirit is released and is freed. So the body has to undergo torment of suffering so that the spirit can be released. It has to be subjected to spiritual disciplines and all these techniques and so, you know. So um, there's a foundation of Easter as a mystical um, occasion in the great faith of Christianity. But I don't think the Jews accept Christians, however they, many of them have converted into Islam and so on, like you find in the Middle East and so, like the exchange between Israel and Palestine, they intermarry, do war and so, they come together and all of this stuff. But um, Jesus during his time is used the king of the Jews, they planted a crown of thorns on his head and embarrass him in many ways. So in this way his um, animalistic, what they call the Asuric nature, just broke down, just dissipated, dissolved and his spirit became uh, liberated and free. The last bondage, so when he the thing they crucified him, they say he didn't die, you know, that he rose up, he resurrected his body back because he had the power to do that, you know, to do that. He was a such great sight, he achieved in spiritual plane that people can conquer death. Not only should you aim to conquer life, be victorious in life, achieve and be successful, but they say you should conquer death also. Be the conqueror of death. Be able to rise again, be able to control your future incarnations, to die peacefully, to die without disease, to die when you like, where you like, how you like, when you like, and how to live as long as you like. These are all facets of conquering death, you know. So great mystic that Jesus was, we have that he um, played with his physical board. You see, he was the great angel, I think, Saint Stephen or one of these angels and archangels who came down. He was only second to Lucifer. So, um, Lucifer was the closest to God. He was the most beautiful of angels. But he disobeyed God, he think he's getting so great, so powerful. He wanted to take over from God when God isn't around. He wanted to be the co-ruler of heaven and earth. So, they had to throw him down, cast him down. He became the ruler of this earth, known as... Hinduism as Kal Niranjan or Devil, Satan, Mara, and uh, Shaitan and all these names he has, you know. So um, since then you have all these problems going on in society and the world, corruption and evil and wickedness since the Kal Jug Age and Dark Age. So Jesus came during the same age here, Kal Jug Age. Dark Age according to the Hindu calculation. That was just 2,000 years ago, before Jesus had other religions, great religions also in existence, mathematics, exchange of ideas between the Arabs and the Indians, Hindus, Egyptians, the um, Chinese were very active, the Incas and the Mayas were great civilization at that time. So what we have is that Jesus brought in a new era, the Christian era. And when he taught these people things, they got a stability, a platform from which they could launch themselves like a rocket in space, you know, bring in new culture and civilization with this new religion, a new face, a new peace descending on earth. You know, because plenty of people converted to Christianity after he died and the faith spread all over Europe from the Middle East. Constantine helped to spread it and other missionaries and teachers. They fanned out across all over the world and they spread the teachings of Jesus Christ. So um, we have that, um, like all religions everywhere, you have the materialistic side and the religious side. You know, like in India, we have Bollywood and we have Hinduism, traditional or orthodox Hinduism. Some New Age cults are teaching that you can live both with secular and the sacred. So in Western too, we have Christianity, we have the Judaism, the Abrahamism, and all the New Age religion that they practice. 
and they have also the parallel side which is go on to the material and the secular life so uh, most some Guyana longer used to have the Catholic school where the secularism we try to reduce it you know what people start to get curious about the secular life it start to look so colorful and wonderful from your point of view you know it's the grass is greener syndrome so everybody wants to get into the secular into the secular life and when you get into it the troubles are more in the spiritual life you like putting your finger in a hot fire so this is how um things usually go you know that when the savior come or when religious people try to work in society when the majority is against you it's like working against nature working against the ocean tide you know sometimes difficult to struggle is uphill climb you have to be tough and strong that's why they say spirituality is one of the toughest part you know it's now physical warfare only but in the mental and psychic you know um so um let's have a wonderful lisa let's see how it will play out today i'm up in wilford avenue here in thomas thomas lands i used to call me here i used to spend many easters here when it is the time it was a gift we go on holidays and all these stuff you know but now i'm not in school anymore let me see how this video come out